Hello and welcome to my simple animation tutorial. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you how to make a very simple animation in Monogame by using a sprite strip. I will make a tutorial later that shows you how to use a, to a full sprite sheet to make an animation. But I think we need to start from um, with the easy things. So I'm going to show you how to take a sprite strip like this and divide it into small pictures and use these pictures to show you uh, to to make an animation so first thing we're going to do is to make a new project we're going to select the mono game and we're going to give it the name uh, simple animation and remember to select the mono game windows open gl project so the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to rename my project name here. So I have game 1. I'm going to press F2 to rename it and call it game form. And that renames my my class game 1. Um, I want to use some classes to create this sprite animation. So at because I want to be able to reuse my be the behavior we're going to make in this this um, tutorial and we're going to reuse the behavior later when we're going to make uh, an animated sprite by using a sprite sheet but the first thing we're going to do is that we'll make a new class so you right click on the project name here and select add and you add a new class um, this class is going to be named animated sprite this class is only gonna be like it's gonna contain all the functionality we need to animate our sprite it's not gonna contain the functionality we need to move our player around and all that so it's gonna be a base class and because it's a base class we are going to make this class abstract and when we make something abstract we make sure that we won't be able to instantiate it anywhere so right now if I go to my game form I will be able to write somewhere in my code that my animated sprite and I can call it player or something equals new animated sprite and this is perfectly acceptable right now because our animated sprite is just a normal class but I don't really need need to be able to instantiate an animated sprite like this because I'm going to make a player class that is going to inherit all the behavior from the animated sprite and I want to instantiate the player class instead so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call this abstract and as soon as I call this abstract the intelligence like catches this and says like hey there's something wrong here you cannot create an instance of the abstract class or interface okay this is because our animated sprite is abstract now what we want to do is that we want to make a player class that and here's all the behavior from our abstract animated sprite class and then we're going to instantiate our player class instead so far so good so we're gonna make a new class out here and call it player and this player class is going to inherit all our functionality in our animated sprite class so we're going to call it animated sprite if you jump back to this error in our game form you'll see that we still have this error here we're going to delete this and then we're going to we're going to go to the top of our class here pop the class game form and we're going to make a new player and call it player without capital letters and this player is what we're going to instantiate a use and use so it's perfectly acceptable for us right now to go to load content and write player equals new player as you can see I won't get any errors here because my player class inherits an abstract class but the player class isn't abstract in itself and uh, yeah so the first thing we need to do is that we need to place our player on a position in our game and we do that by drawing it on a specific position. So 
our animate sprite needs some kind of position so we will make a private vector vector 2 and okay sorry and it's right inside the class here I'm a little sleepy private vector 2 and now it tells you that yeah there is no <coughs> namespace called vector 2 so we need to implement this namespace by right clicking on vector 2 selecting resolve and we want to use the Microsoft XNA framework interface namespace sorry so now it it implemented this namespace and as you can see we have our vector 2 and we're just going to call it S position for sprite position and we want to set this sprite position somehow and we're going to set this position whenever we instantiate a new sprite so we will make a constructor and that's always public when we work like this public animated sprite and it's basically like a function so you need your scope beneath it so here I have my animated sprite constructor and in this constructor we're going to set this position so I'm going to make a new vector 2 here call it position and this position I create here is going to be set the position that is in my sprite so my s position equals position so what happens now when I instantiate my um, sprite is that I'm going to add a position and I'm going to set it to the position of the sprite that we'll be using to draw or our um, our sprite and here I'm also going to make constructor called public player and now you're going to get some errors if we build it's a simple simple animation um, animate sprite does not contain a construct that takes zero arguments okay that's because we make made our sprite here and we created one argument here called position so our player needs to take the same argument so vector2 implement the namespace call it position or something and we need to give this position from our player to our animated sprite somehow and we do that by calling base and if we open this you'll be able to see that it takes a position and we're just going to give it this position oh. and I can't spill over here apparently like this so what happens now is that when we instantiate our player we give a position through our constructor and this position we hand over to our base class which gives it to the field called uh, is position so we have set our position and now it says that yeah player doesn't take a constructor that takes zero arguments so it wants this position so we're just going to make a new vector2 in our game form class and we're going to open new one and now it wants a float x position and a y position and we're just going to make it 100 point 100 for this example sake so what we have done now is that we have created our player up here we instantiate the player and set its position to 100 point 100 and we set we give it to the we give it through the player constructor which hands it over to the animated sprite constructor which hand it over to our position variable in our sprite class animate sprite okay we need some different f uh, methods here to make our animated sprite work first thing we need is a function called a method called update public void update this update needs to update our picture so that it uh, it cycles through all the pictures on our sprite ship strip and to do that we need some time and we can use game time to do this so we're gonna take one 
um, one parameter called game time. Oh, I can't hit my keyboard right now. Like this. Okay. Uh, we're not going to give any functionality right now. We just I'm just going to show you the functions that we need. Um, next thing we need to do is that we need to draw our sprite. So public void draw. And to draw something, we need a sprite batch. So we can write sprite batch like this. I can't spell apparently. Sprite batch. Right click on it and use the namespace frame. XNA framework graphics. Um, yeah, and this is the functions that we need to use to draw our sprite. We can already go to our game form class and add these, um, add the functionality here. Um, as you can see, we have our load content here, which loads our load content that we need for the game. And actually, we need um, we need some <coughs> to load in our sprite texture, like the sprite strip. So first, we need to add it to the game. So we add. Uh, we click on load content, press add, and add existing item. Then we go to the desktop where I've put my things. I press all files and. Then I have my sprite strip here called player. And now I have added it to my project. And what I need to do is to click the player and press copy always as copy to output directory. If I don't do this, I won't be able to load my content and it will give me an error. This is saying cannot load con non content file or something like that. But now I have made it copy always so it will copy it to the project so I, that I can use it. We need to be load this content somehow. So I'm going to go to my player class and make a new function called public void load content. And to load some content we need a content manager. So I need to write content manager. Right click on it, resolve and use the SNA framework content. I'm gonna name this content manager content In here, we need to instantiate, <coughs> add our content texture to our sprite texture from our animated sprite class. And to do that, we need to make a protected S te texture, texture 2D. I'm just going to call it texture. The reason that I call the protections is that I'll be able to use this. Um, variable in all classes that inherits this class, which means if I go to my player class and write as texture, I can easily grab it here and instantiate it or do whatever with that protected um, field that I want. If I go to my animate sprite class and call it private instead, I won't be able to write as texture anymore because it's protect it's private, but we want it to be protected, so. Now make protected so that we can do something with it from our classes that inherits the base class. Now I have my X texture and I need to inst uh, load some content into it. So I equals it to content that load texture 2D. Right click on it and implement. And the name is player. So what this function does now is that it takes the player um, player picture like this this PNG image and loads it into our texture in our sprite which we'll be using to draw something on the screen later. So far so good. So if we go back to our game form class, we will call this load content function by writing player dot player Okay, player dot load content, and it needs a content manager, and we have a content manager out here just called content. This one, and what this will do is that it will take the content manager, 
and hand it over to the player class so that we can use it to load our texture. Next thing we need to do is that we need to update our player. So we write player dot update and it takes the game time as a parameter as you see here. So this will call the update function in our animate sprite. And then we need to draw it. And we'll do that like player.draw. And it takes a sprite batch, which we also have out here. One thing you need to do when you draw something is that you need to tell it when to start draw something and when to stop drawing something. So we need to tell the sprite batch that sprite batch dot begin. Because we need to tell it that we are going to start drawing something here before we call the player draw and on the other side we're going to type write sprite batch dot end and this is telling it that now we're done drawing so we need to end this okay so now we have all the functions and now we need to fill in some functionality the player class is basically done this is all that we need to do for now but we need to create this animate sprite so if we go to the draw function, that's the first thing. First we need to get the sprite batch and we need to use it to draw. As you can see it takes some different uh, parameters. The first thing is the sprite texture. And then it takes a rectangle. This is not the one we want. We want this one where we also give the position and the rectangle. Yeah, this is the one we want. We need to give it a texture, a position, a rectangle, and a color. The position we already got it's is position. But we also need to give it a rectangle. And this rectangle is one of the rectangles we'll be using to pick one of the frames on our sprite sheet or our sprite strip. So we need to make these rectangles. And to do this we're we'll just gonna make a private rectangle and call this rectangle rectangles. And this um this array is gonna contain all the rectangles we need for our animation. So we're going to write this rectangles dot color dot white and what this color dot white does is that it it just sets the color as the normal color as you can see it like complains that about the rectangles here and that's because our rectangle is an array and we need to define somehow that uh, we need to tell it somehow what frame it needs to show in the current moment when it's drawing so we need to make a uh, some index here that should cycle through our array so we can show um, a picture and then show the next picture and next picture so we can cycle through our animation. We're going to make a private um, int and call it frame index. And this frame index will be used to draw, show the right picture. So now we have our draw, draw method. Mm, yeah. Um, now we need to divide the sprite sheet into an animation so that when we will be drawing something we can take one rectangle and draw one picture and to do that we're going to make a new function method called public add oh, public void sorry add animation and we need to tell this method how many uh, how many pictures we need for our our animation and we're going to do that by using an int variable call it frames so to divide this we need to know how wide every frame is on our sprite strip and we can do that by taking the width of the total picture like which is 600 pixels and divide by that by the number of frames 
which is 12. So 600 divided by 12 is 50 pixels per frame. By calculating these 50 pixels, we can um, we will know how how much um, how big our rectangles needs to be. So we will take the width, and the width is equal to the sprite texture that width divided by frames. And we need to instantiate our array of rectangles that should contain all the rectangles we need. So it's rectangles equals new rectangle frames, which will in this situation make a an array with fifth um with sorry with twelve um twelve spots twelve indexes. So we're gonna make a for each loop here. And you can get this if you use Visual Studio, like it can make this little template for you if you write four and tap twice, it will make this this setup for you. And we want to run as many times as we have frames, so we want to run frames here because we need to make uh, twelve rectangles and put them in this array, and <coughs> that's why we write frames here. So this for loop would run uh, 12 times. So it's rectangles. First time we need to put it into ze like index 0, so we just use this i here as our indexer. And we need to make a new rectangle in this array. And it will be equal to i times width which will be 0 the first time and our y is always 0 because there's <coughs> it will always need to draw it from the top left corner and then we'll take a width which is 50 and then it will always have the same height so it's texture but height and basically what this part does is that it takes our sprite sheet and divides it uses and it uses all the things we just calculated here to create those 12 rectangles we need to show our animation. So now when we have created our animation, um, yeah, when we've created our animation, we need to uh, cycle through it somehow. What we're going to do is that we need to call this add animation somehow. And we can do that in our player load content so after we load the content we write player oh sorry not player we just write add animation and 12 because we know that there's 12 frames in this uh, texture then we go to our update and our update needs to run through this array so it needs to change this <coughs> frame index so right now it's frame index is all those always zero. So if we would run our code now, you'll just see one sprite here which isn't being updated because update doesn't do anything. What update needs to do is that it needs to take this frame index and run from zero to eleven all the time so that it cycles through our animation. If I would take this frame index here in update and set it to uh, I don't know, six or something then it would be showing a totally different picture I think I'll make a breakpoint here okay that wasn't the, <laughs> the best one to show let's try it free or something yeah as you can see he's running because the next free is this picture and we need to cycle through it somehow To do that, we need some um, what is called some variables to keep track of this. We need one variable called what should we call it? Time elapsed or something, and that's a double private double time elapsed. And we need another uh, variable called private double. Um, time to update
and these two are going to be used to cycle through this animation. As time elapsed, it's going to keep track of how much, much time we have that has passed, and uh, time to update is going to keep track of um, how much time <coughs> uh, will be used in you know, each update, how much time should like pass before we'll update it. So, time elapsed. We need to add time to this time elapsed every time an update runs. And this game time we have here is equal to the time that has passed since last the game time ran. Right, so, sorry. This game time is equal to the time that has passed since update ran last time. So time elapsed plus equals, which because we want to add it up to the time elapsed that is already game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds. What this does is that it will add up time elapsed to this. I add time elapsed up all the time. So if I will run my game and put a breakpoint here, you can see time lapse zero point seven something. And if I remove the breakpoint and run it for quite a while and put the breakpoint in again, you'll see that now it has almost been four seconds since we started our game. So now we need to use this time lapse for something. So if and you can do this by tapping as well. If you write if and tap twice, you'll get this construction here. So if our time elapsed is bigger than time to update, well, then we need to change our frame to one other index and we need to reset our timer. So first thing we're going to do is that we're going to reset our timer. So our time elapsed and we're going to take off the time to update. And if we reset it like this instead of just writing time elapsed equals zero, we'll have a steady frame rate because <coughs> then we'll, um, we'll take the time to update and um, take it from the time elapsed which will give us a steady frame rate instead of just equal to zero which will give us a little gap with some milliseconds sometimes that wouldn't be used. So if our frame index is bigger than our is rectangle rectangles dot length minus one because remember an array has is zero indexed which means that the length is twelve but the biggest index in this array is currently eleven which means that we have to minus one <coughs> because if we will go through the whole length which is 12, we will get an index out of bounds exception. If our frame index is between 0 and 11, we want to say frame index plus plus, which adds one up to our frame index so that we will cycle through our animation. Else, else we will set our frame index to 0. So if our current frame index would be 11 and show the last image, then we will jump back to the first one, so we'll loop our animation. And yeah, <coughs> because first time we run this, our animation frame index would be 0, next time it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And when it comes to 11, it will reset it. Uh, we want to set this time to update somehow because we want to decide how fast our animation should run. So what we want to do is to make a property called in frames per second. And we're going to set this by setting it like this time to update equals one divided by the value we set. So what this does is that we have this frames per second pro um, property and it will set our time to update which is used to update our frame. And our time to update equals 1 divided by the value we set. So 1 divided by 30 for example if we set our frame per second to 30. And this frames per second is 
going to be set here in our player. So we can say frames per second equals 10, for example. So now our time to update is 1 divided by 10. If we run our game now, you'll see that our character is running on the spot. with 10 frames per second. If we would add like 100 or something, or like 30, you'll see that our character is running way faster now. And that's basically how you make a very simple animation. I know I used a lot of time explaining it, but I want to get through everything. If you have any questions, you are welcome to post it in the com comments. And please like the movie if, you, if, it, if this was useful.